What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Jaquel Legacy, and welcome back to my channel, Jaquel Legacy. And today's Jaquel time is going to be about my mom, um, everything from the good, the bad, the positive, negative, and the ugly. Uh, I'm just going to just basically tell my stories and memories that I had of, of my mom, you know, us being when we were together, as well as like even times to now, present day. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, Jaquel time number eight. Um... Without further ado, let's get into this Drakel time. But yeah, basically growing up with my mom, it was pretty much, um, it wasn't really much. It was the usual. She worked three jobs at a, once a point in time. Um, she would, at first, you know, after she had me, um, and then I was able to go home, basically she would just, um, just try to make ends meet and work as much as she could to provide for me. Because I was um, her firstborn at the time. And basically, all she would do was just work, you know, typical fast food jobs, typical just whatever she can do to get some income for me at the time. And then as the time went on, um, we just, you know, I just eventually grew up, you know, and then became older as far as a kid. And basically, pretty much um, living with her when I lived with her. Um, I'm going to give you all each seg point, you know, where I lived and with her at times and stuff like that. So basically living with her um, uh, on Hallville, Winfield, basically all she really would do is work um, a lot. She would work a lot. Like my granny mostly was around uh, for a lot of my childhood memories. Like she was like like my mom, really. Like I say, I call her my mom. So she would always be basically the aid that I needed or just the mother that I wanted and needed due to the fact that my mom was always trying to work or I always just trying to make ends meet because it's like she had me to worry about too as well as herself and so basically all she would do is work just work like she does to this day just work 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 and then it would, it would be hard on me because you know growing up in them situations you you looking for a mother and a father but i was unfortunate enough to not have a father during those times it was on and off due to stuff he you know was doing like i've said in previous videos um, so basically, yeah, I was just looking for a mother. Um, I look, I was looking for a lot of attention. I seeked a lot of attention and my granny was there for me through all them times that I most needed. Like it was times where it got so bad. I just was just like, I cried at my granny and just call her my mom. Like for a long time, um, I would, I would call her my mom and then I would didn't break down how I felt. Most time I would cry, you know, because at the time I was a kid and I didn't really understand why she was doing things she was doing as far as like, you know, working or as far as, you know, talking about me or, you know, just slandering my name through the mud. And we're going to get into that. But, you know, yeah, my, my grandma was like my mom, mostly. Like, I, I feel like she's more of a mom as far as the love. Maybe not material things, but it's not about that. It's about the love and the care and just being there for your kid at the end of the day. And it shouldn't have to take from my granny, you know, to be like a mom role to me. It should take from my mom, but you know, it is what it is. And that's something that I can't control. That's something she can control. Um, so yeah, growing up, it was hard. It was rough. Um, typical, she'll work nine to fives, work at one point in time when my Sonny, my Sonny, my sister got here, um, the Sonny she would then eventually have to work three jobs or two jobs. And then it came to the point where she was just working, you know, she would be home. Like when she would be home, it would be typical like arguments with my grandmother or, you know, she will be probably trying to go out and live her little life at the time and do things to make her feel good and feel sane. Um, but it never was really moments. Like I never really ate with my mom for dinner. Um, I did when I had section eight though, when I, uh, when I was in like, I want to say second grade, um, second or third when I had stayed in section eight, um, when I lived with my dad and her, um, but she wouldn't really eat with us. She would like more so cook the food and then just like here. And then she either going to sleep or she's going out, you know, cause like now my father will be home and then it's like, okay, well he can chill with you type. So yeah, it was pretty much like all through my childhood. Like she wasn't really there. Like, not saying she wasn't always there, but she wasn't there enough. And my dad, that's another story. Like, he he was never really there. Like, honestly, he just, he picked up his baggage, picked up what he had to carry as far as himself. And I mean himself, and he went on his way and, you know, lived his life with all the other kids he once took care of or was in their lives, you know, helping them at the time. Still to this day. 
And so basically, um, with my mom, it was just, I, I, as like I said, I just cried on my grandmother. I just, you know, just cry. Like I go in my room and I just cry, like hoping that, you know, one day she could just say she loved me or, you know, say she, you know, cares about me rather than just giving me shit to make me feel some type of good, which at a time is like, yeah, you a kid and you appreciate the shit that she's giving you because it is like a gift. And I didn't understand, you know, until I actually got older and started to catch on, like, why she would do it. And then I would eventually ask my mom, my granny, see how I said that, my granny, I would ask her uh, stuff like, um, you know, why is she never saying, saying she loved me? Why is she never, you know, being around? Why is she never, you know, like, giving me hugs and kisses like a mother would do to her kid? Hey, I'm your firstborn. I'm not asking for much, you know. Fuck all the other shit, the material shit. Just give me love. That's all I cared about. And... I never really got it, bro. Like, I, I had memories, you know, and I'll get into that. But, yeah, and I remember just crying on my granny all the time or just eventually getting immune to the fact that, you know, she didn't really, you know, too much care to be around. Or even if she wanted to be around, she would be around and it would be like, shit, she talking shit about me or, you know, she talking shit about my granny or she's just trying to stir up negative energy. Like I said in my last video, my mom and family, it's very fucking negative, like, very fucking negative. So imagine living in a negative environment. You know, you live in a negative situation as far as where you stay at. And your mom's not here. And when she is here, she's just talking shit to a kid. Like, I was a kid, bro. Like, it wasn't like I was older. And she talked about me when I was older, but I'll get into that. But, like, just talking shit, bro. Like, I go to school and do bad shit because shit. I, um, it's the only intention I'm getting, you know, is her yelling at me or whooping my ass with a belt or calling me out my name. So it's like, hey, that was my intention that I would get. And I would do shit so I can get that attention, you know, as I'm sure anybody else would do. If they wasn't getting no attention, they're going to lash out. They're going to do dumb shit so they can't get attention. And I was never getting attention. You know, her attention would be beat my ass, making me stay in the house or taking a little shit away from me and just, you know, basically belittling my character. And then... You know, it just became a habit. It became a regular until, like, she got surgery. You know, she got surgery done to uh, lose weight because she used to be, like, you know, big as hell. Um, and she basically got surgery. And so that was when she had long-ass dreads. Um, and basically, she ended up getting surgery. And then before, all them years up until she got the surgery, treating me like dog shit. Like, treating me like a fucking, like... As if I wasn't even her kid, bro. Like, I'm not even bullshit. Like, yeah, toys and shit. Like, yeah, there would be times I had birthdays as a kid, bro. And, nigga, I have a little birthday money. And, mind you, back then I'm getting, like, $60. So I can get, like, a game or, like, give me, like, a phone case. I had an iPod at the time. Um, but, yeah, so I can just give me something rather than some fucking McDonald's or, you know, whatever I can afford with $60 fucking dollars, basically. And she would basically, like... uh she would basically like I remember we was in Target it was on 38th Street and it was one of my birthdays I don't remember what year I want to say I was 11 um but yeah she was she get she's like okay well they didn't have nothing that I could afford so she was like just give me the money and I'll put I'll basically put the money I have with it you know and then tomorrow we'll come back and you'll be able to get what you want because I'll put the money I got with your birthday money mind you I had I had went through 30 so I had 30 dollars left I gave her that shit, and then the next day came, and then I'm, it comes. I get out of school, and I'm like, "Okay, mom, we about to go up here." She's like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't have your money." I never fucking forget, bro. Like I wouldn't lie, bro. Like, you know, she probably to this day put that shit so far out of her brain, or just push that shit so far away that she just honestly don't fucking remember or care to remember, and probably remember just don't want to accept the truth, you know. So, but yeah, it took my fucking birthday money. Like you gave me. You know, my granny would always give me my ages. She would always give me like $11 or $10 and that'd be it because how old I turn. And she also happened to get 60. And basically I gave her 30 because they didn't have them I couldn't afford at Target. So then the next day came and I'm like, okay, I get I, She's like, go to school, you know, don't cry. Don't be upset. You'll be able to get a game. I was trying to get a game. And boom, the next day come on. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all, it's my allergies. But the next day I come, next day come, and then we, I'm like, okay, mom, I went to school. Now, can we go? Mind you, this is the day after my fucking birthday. And boom, she turned around and she, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. Um, Basically, like, it's gone type shit. In my head, 
Like, until I got older, I'm like, damn, she took my shit. Like, and then I would just accept, like, okay, like, maybe she spent it on something. And then she, she never gave me that back. Never returned the favor back. Like, here's your money, whatever, like that. And I, I, I promise to God, bro. Like, I'm not lying, bro. Like, I wouldn't be able to remember, remember this shit so vividly. And then come on here and then act like I don't remember or just add shit to it. No, like, bro, she dead ass is foul, bro. And she know that. And I get into that. So imagine you in a childhood, okay, you in, you you're a child, you know, one pound, seven ounces, premature, three months early. You know, you in the hospital, you know, your granny, she's coming to see you like a motherfucker. She's taking the bus to come see you or somehow getting the way up there to see you. You know, and I remember there was a time where my mom was there. And she she said she had to go. She said she had to go. And I'm like, mind you, I'm on a hospital bed with IVs and shit in me. I'm like, where are you going? Because I was like in and out. You know, I was in and out. So I would wake up and then I'm like, okay, well, shit, where are you going? And she said, I got to go. Uh, I got to go to work and shit like that. And then I remember, nigga, she left. I cried like a motherfucker to the point where I got up. She said, I'll be back later or tomorrow. At least she said later. And I got up off the bed with the IV, long ass thing with the, which you can see your heart beating shit on it. The long ass shit you can hold and walk with when you in the hospital. And I'm a kid, I'm walking with this shit to the door. And I'm like, okay, Mitch, I don't see her. Maybe she went to the restroom. Cause it was like, later, time had went on. Hours had went on. So then I go out there and then I'm like, it got to the point where I was walking around the lobby for, it's like a kid's, it was a kid's side. So like all you in, all in each room is just kids and parents probably. And I had to stay the night a lot of times because, you know, I was a premature and shit. So as I got older, it would start to fuck with me and my health and shit like that. And so, yeah, I'll go out there. And I'm just walking around. I'm going to each room trying to find my mom type shit. And then it got to the point where the hospital lady was like, okay, what are you doing? Why are you out of, why are you out of your room? And I'm, I'm looking for my mommy. Where's my mommy? She said she was coming back. And she was like, yeah, your mom's not coming back till tomorrow. Tomorrow came, the next day came, and she ain't come. My granny came, and then that shit fucked me up. So then, boom, fast forward, you know, going to school and you doing bad shit, you know, because of anger or because you ain't getting attention or your mama talking shit, and that's all I had to deal with. Like, that was the only attention I always got, you know. And basically, she always was slandering my name still to this day, like just trying to drag my name through the mud, tried so hard to just do me so bad. But it won't break me like it did before because I was young. You know, that's all I had type shit. Like, so I didn't I didn't find myself until now. And I'm still learning and finding myself as I, you know, continue to grow older and as the days and weeks and seconds and time goes on. I'm still finding myself to this day, but I'm just glad I got that situation. So basically, fast forward, um, basically, you know, she basically all childhood, she would talk shit. She would say the most craziest shit to me. You know, my sister can vouch, but, you know, she ain't going to really say the truth because, like, she stays with her to this day. So she ain't going to say what's really going on or, you know, or she going to play like she don't know. But she would talk so bad about me, bro. Like, and I just cry, 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 cry. And then I'm down, I'm crying, and she'll talk more shit about me, like, you stupid, or, you know, why the fuck are you crying, you fucking soft-ass bitch? Uh, why are you, why are you acting so fucking stupid? Like, why are you always crying? And I'm like, because you don't say you love me, because you don't care about me, because you treat me like I ain't your fucking kid. I'm a kid saying that shit, bro. I'm a fucking child saying that shit to my mom, not my fucking granny, my fucking mom. You know, so it's like, it, it, and she didn't give a fuck. And then it got to the point where I would cry to my granny. And then my granny would be like, well, yeah, she acts his way because she doesn't have her father. Or she acts his way because she doesn't understand love. Or she acts his way because she doesn't, you know, know how to love. And as we go past, you know, when I was a kid to then, now I'm living with her. You know, fast forward, I'm living with her at like, uh, I was living with her at, uh, I just get to where I was just at like type shit like two, three years ago. And I was at Walmart. I worked at Walmart. When I was 18, 17, 18. And basically, um, yeah, she, I would, I would, I would, she would talk shit then. Like, bro, like all these years, bro, just talking shit, like saying the most worst shit about me to me. Just trying to basically, you know, destroy my character as a whole. You feel me? It's like, I already ain't got my dad like that in my life. He often happily ever after with his stepkids or whoever the fuck he with. And then you got my granny. She old, but she trying to find herself because most of my life, 
she taking care of grandkids. I'm her first grandkid of many. So she's taking care of me as a kid. Then taking care of all these other additional grandkids that's coming right behind me. So it's like, she only can do so much because she's getting older and older and older. She's a fucking granny. And I remember my mama, she didn't say she fucking loved me, bro. Literally until I like damn near got my first car. And, she, and even then she really wouldn't even say it. Like she'd probably put it, i put it like this. She would say she loved me on like a post or something. But face to face, all that shit was cap. She wouldn't say she loved me. She'd be on some hateful, spiteful ass shit. Just cause, I guess, cause I might look like my dad or, you know, I might just be doing bad shit. So she just really just like, nigga, you just like him. So you like him, I hate him. So now I hate you. And it's like, she got surgery. And when she got surgery, you know, she would basically just be, she was, she was, you know, she was like, you know, she got lipo. So she just would be like sick and I'd be there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to take care of her because I'm a fucking kid, but I'd be there by her bedside, bro. It's crazy. I was by my dad by his bedside and he did me wrong. And then my mom just always did me wrong too while in my life, you know, being around when she would be or just do a text or whatever. And then like basically, yeah, she got surgery and I'm like, okay, bet. You know, she looked new. She, she now lost the weight. She now looks like a whole different person, like skinny as hell. You know, just looks like, you know, appealing to people, most likely, I'll say. Like, she's appealing to the eye. And basically, she would just, you know, at first, the first couple of weeks and months, she'll still be, she'll have, like, uh, side effects from the pills. And it say, like, it'll say shit like, um, you know, anger problems, bipolar disorder, shit like that. Depression, everything you can think of, she would have. Oh, shit. I thought, man, I'm sick. <laughs> Uh, it's allergies, no COVID over here. Um, but yeah, uh, she over time like it took like it took like a month for her to get like she started being nice, bro. She started act like my mom, a real mom should, you know, like how my granny would be, like real fucking nice, bro. And it was like I'm like damn, like all these years I remember thinking to myself, all these years you mean as hell, evil as hell, dark as hell, because whatever you got going on and shit or whatever I'm doing, but I'm a fucking kid. Um, and then boom, she just started acting cool, like cool as fuck, but never said she loved me. It's acting cool as fuck. Like it'd be times I would get her in the car and I say, I love you and shit like that. And she wouldn't even like say it back. She was like, boy, stop it, boy. Like just trying to like change the subject quick, like quick as fuck. Like, and I would be like, why the fuck she act like this, bro? Like you act like I'm not even like you wasn't like, like I wasn't your firstborn. I wasn't in the hospital dying bro I, I i just still to this day don't get why how somebody as like a mother can act the way they do to their kid you know any of their kids first second third fourth however many you know i don't understand that shit bro but man she had cool and shit then instantly right back to it and then it'll be coming weeks weeks like every week she'll change the cool to mean cool to mean and i'm just like yeah this bitch crazy not to call her a bitch but like like psycho bro fucking crazy and basically, boom, uh, fast forward. Now we living in, uh, we'll say Eagle Valley, you know, when I was 17, 18. Mind you, all them years in school, she talking shit about me. Nigga, she believing in teachers and shit like that. And just talking bad about me, bro. Like, treat me like a fucking, like, bro, like a piece of paper you ball up and throw on the ground. And then it just, over time, just builds up with more trash and more trash. And then, you know, you might dig it out, look at it. Oh, I don't need this. Ball it back up and throw it back inside the pile of trash. And then just to stick my character, like, talk shit. And then, like, yeah, living with her and shit. Um, now I'm 17, 18. And then basically, like, she'd be cool. I got videos when I, when I, when I worked at Walmart, you know, when she would pick me up. I go in the car, you know, show her and be happy because now we just listen to Young Boy and Money Bag and all this music and shit, bop bopping and chilling like we good, like it feel good. And I'm enjoying it so much, enjoying it so much. And then the car should happen. And I remember like basically she didn't like the fact that I had a car. You know, she she's overprotective as hell and she didn't want me to even get the car. Like I got the video. And she she was like basically saying, like, I don't know if you even going to get the car. You know, and I'm just like, yeah, I am. I'm just talking over, like, yeah, I am in the video. Fast forward, she called my dad up there. He come up there. He, they let this nigga basically. They drove. They both drove the car. I had a permit. It's my car. I gave it as fourteen hundred dollars cash, but I got from Walmart. 
and basically like it's the third time I stacked up that much money. The first time I didn't have a permit. The second time I tried to get a cosign, and my uncle he a dealer, car dealer, his shit didn't work out. Cause then that was back when Houston had the floods. And then the third time I stacked it up again. I stacked up fourteen hundred three times. Third time, but I'm like, man, I go get my permit, pass that shit, go get the car. You know, I got an October seventeenth, twenty seventeen. I get the car. Um, and then they was like, yeah, you ain't basically like, they will not let me drive, bro. My dad talking about there's too much power and all this shit. I'm like, bro, I'm, they basically enjoying the fucking car that I just worked my ass off and stacked up 1400 three times for and, and went and bought and picked out and shit. And they driving that motherfucker and I'm in the passenger seat. My sister in the back, they driving that motherfucker like, what the fuck? Like, and basically like when I got the car fast forward, we get home. She take a picture. It's on her Instagram. She take a picture, and I'm holding the fucking keys. Mind y'all. I take the picture. Y'all see the good, but y'all don't see the bad. And so basically, I take a picture with the keys. The whole time, she talking shit because I'm like, I can't park the car. Mind y'all, bro. I drove before as a kid, but, like, I drove with her, her dude now, whatever the fuck they is. And he basically was like, yeah, he doesn't know how to drive. Because we basically, we had, like, a... uh. We we had went around from where we lived at and went went around the neighborhood and went out the streetway and came back in three times. And each time I do different, but you gotta think, bro, I'm in the car with a nigga I don't know. I'm in the car just like, you know, I'm new to this. It's a fucking Chrysler. You know, I ain't even get to drive that magnum like that. So I'm gonna do bad. You know, I ain't gonna be perfect, but shit, you know, I'm I'm learning, bro. And boom. You know, he 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 in the car. It's crazy, a whole other nigga. You know, that's my brother dad now. Um, my little brother. Uh, he he showed me how to basically drive a fucking car, or not even show me. He didn't tell me a little shit, but basically he in a fucking passenger when my dad should be. So that should say a lot about the damn the dad situation that I my real dad. And I remember we went back. He told her like he can't drive my job. my new car. You know, is in the fucking uh, it's in the garage. She had drive my shit, shit, bro. Like it's her shit. Yeah, it's in her name. Yeah, she co-signed me, and I'm just a nigga with the permit. You know, just basically like the fucking bottom of the barrel, and like it's his, like it's her shit. She driving it, all type of shit. You know, she going in to go get food or do whatever, or come on, okay, I'm taking your car today. Like just taking over the whole shit. And I go to school. She went, bro. She wouldn't even let me drive to work. It got all the way up until I got my license. Damn near. Like I had my per like towards the end of my uh, permit ending cycle. She like okay, you can drive because she 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 had my car keys, nigga. Mind you, it's her car and her it's it's my car, but it's in her name, and she basically like put that motherfucker like she took the keys. Yeah, you don't know how to drive because I had drove with her, my granny and my little cousin and my sister in the car, and she to like McDonald's or something. She was just freaking out, bro. Mind you, I'm driving regular as hell, bro. And it's like, how am I gonna drive good if you in the motherfucking passenger calling me out my name, calling me stupid, yelling all this shit, bro? All this shit. How am I going to do good if you fucking distracting me? I only got a permit at the time. And he's like, I'm still learning. How am I supposed to learn if you talking shit about me? My granny in the back, she's saying, just let him do him type shit. Like, shut up. And my mama was not shut the fuck up. And she was next to me in the passenger seat. Uh, and basically just talking shit. And basically it got so bad, bro. Like, she ended up taking the keys and giving the keys to my granny. Mind y'all, my granny is like my mom. So I'm just like, I I go to school. I, it got so bad. Mind you, I had a car and I had my permit. And I stayed like 10 minutes from my school at the time. She wouldn't even let me get, she wouldn't even let me drive to school, bro. She would be like, uh, no, nah, you got a permit. You're not driving this. What if you get pulled over? All this delusional ass shit. Like, how am I supposed to learn if you goddamn act, treat me like I'm a fucking child? Like, I'm 17. I got a job. I just got a fucking car. Okay, what more? Can, how can I be? A, what kid is doing that? You know, at 18, fresh 18, buy a car or save for a car at that time, that type of car, you know, and doing the shit I'm doing as far as working and just trying to make her not have to worry about buying me or paying nothing that has to do with me, like little shit. And then I could try to pay her back because I was making 1090 and 11, 1050 the first time, then 1190 the second time when I got my charger, my second car. So, yeah, she basically would just hold the keys hostage, bro. Like, shit, get, I mean, bro. Bro, imagine y'all buy a car at 18. You know, you got your permit. Now you trying to drive to school. You trying, you trying to low-key stunt, show off what you got. Like, 
You know, all these other kids, these privileged kids, they got cars and shit at the parking lot. I'm the nigga. I got the car, and she made me start riding a bus again. How the fuck you take the keys to the car I bought? Yeah, it's your name and all this other shit, but you take the fucking keys, give them to my granny, and she was not going, bro. Like, she did not give me the motherfuckers back. Like, I remember it got so bad, and I had to get a, I had to get a jump because the car would just sit, bro. It got to the point where it would just sit for months. And I would have to get a jump. And my granny wouldn't even, like, try to low-key let me drive the fucking car to get a jump, you know. But then over time, I got my license and shit. Then they would let me, she would let me drive my car to get a jump, you know, with her car. Like, that motherfucker just sat in the garage and shit. And, yeah, she just holding that motherfucker hostage and shit like it's her shit. But I'm the nigga that bought it. I'm the nigga that worked for this motherfucker. And you acting like it's your shit just because it's in your fucking name. And, yeah, basically, um... It got so bad. I'm I'm in school now. I'm I'm a senior and shit. You know I'm doing good. I'm doing cool the first semester. I get my license. You know second semester. Now I'm getting I'm getting falsely told on by the principals and shit. They calling. I had just got to school and shit, and you know I had lost my car because my mama basically was like when the ditch shit the ditch stuff happened. She basically was like um um I need the keys. Uh, I need. And I had just got home with my friend at the time, Yante. We had just got to my house. He was about to. Had, she had got me a little MacBook for Christmas, and we was doing music. We was about to do a song. I went to go because this after the ditch stuff. So this the next day, and my shit uh, was hanging. My fender was hanging, and motherfucker, I boom. I'll go with Deontay. We went to go get the oil change, and I just got the fender fixed with my money. And he was with me. We get home, go to my house, and then as soon as we pull up. She cut. She texted me talking about some. Uh, I need the keys back. Um, uh, by the end, of, like by it was Friday. She said I need the keys back by Sunday night. I'm like hell now. Y'all already took my shit this whole time. Basically, me having this motherfucker and all this shit. It basically took. Um, was like yeah, I need them back and shit like that. I'm gonna return the car and all this bullshit. Like all this shit because I got stuck in a ditch. And then I told her that, and then she said my dad. Uh, said I wasn't stuck in a ditch. Like he basically, I guess, lied and said that I wasn't in a ditch and said I didn't call him. He said I didn't even fucking call him, but he know I called him. You know, he'll deny it to this day or try to change it up, but who give a fuck? Fuck, bro, to be honest, fuck him. And basically, he would uh, lie. And she called him, so I'm going to call your dad and see if he was in a ditch because since you called him instead of me. And then he lied and said I didn't even call him, bro. Said I didn't even call him, said he was asleep. Bullshit. And basically, boom, turn around, and um, I'm with Deontay, we have my crib, and then she like, uh, she texts me all this shit. As soon as I got all this shit fixed, we get there. I like, I gotta take you home, bro. I, t I he got in the car. I went upstairs. Now I took him home. Came back. She texted me some more shit. I ain't even reading her shit. I go, I already right, been. I'm about to get the fuck on, then, bet. So I get down. I got them. Get my little clothes. I had some rocks, some black rocks. I had a red polo hoodie that I always had on, and my work, my work shoes, and my two little work clothes I wear to work. My I switch up. I put that shit in my magnum, nigga. I went. I uh, I was like, all right. I went upstairs, hugged my sister, said, all right, I'm gonna see you for a minute. Uh, I love you, you know. Keep your head high. I love you, you know. I love you so much and shit like that. She was crying like, don't leave. And I told her why. I'm like, I'm gone, bro. You know, dad lying and shit. Mama over acting like I'm a fucking child. So boom, I turned around, I left. And I was gone for, for, for three days. I was gone from that Friday all the way into that Sunday morning. And I would just sleep by like my job in these apartments. I sleep. I sleep in the back seat and shit like that. Like I it's these apartments by my uh house. I mean by my job. And I uh sleep in the back seat and it would be raining and all type of shit. And then it got to the point where I'm coming back now. She said, okay, well, I had to go back, bro. I had to go back because I didn't have no gas now. I didn't have really much of anything. And I was wearing the same shit. So I go back and then she get talking about the key shit. I ain't give her shit. I ain't give her nothing. And then, boom, turn around. I go to school. That's, now I go to school that day. I go to school. She, like, ignored it. Like, I never avoided her type shit. Went to school. Boom. Turn around. Well, I'm in school now. Now I'm skipping school. And I'm telling her, like, because the, the people under me, 12 or 11, whatever, they had ice step. And basically, I didn't have to do ice step because I just didn't have to at the time. It wasn't my time to do it yet. And then, and I would, I would leave at, like, 12 o'clock. Me and a couple other friends, we would leave. And I'd go smoke or go do whatever, go to the hood, go drive around. I mean, just skip school, basically. 
skip school, like leave at 12 and school later at like three. But there'd be times like it got so bad that I'd go to my math class, which is like 30 minutes after that, 12 o'clock. And then I'd be like, mama, I'm finna come, I'm finna leave for the day because the kids is doing ice step and I don't really, they said we really ain't gotta be here. You now we watch the movies all day and shit. So I, I would leave and I'd tell her that, bro. I'd tell her that. And basically, nigga, it got so bad. The teachers, like, were just like, Andrew Kell's leaving, he's skipping school, and he's not nothing paying attention, he's failing. And my mama said it was cool that I can leave back then. She was fine with it. Like, I told her, like, I was doing classes, I was doing all my core classes, and now I'm leaving. And I leave, 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 and she was cool with it. And then, and then it happened so many times, it got to the point where she didn't believe me no more. She thought I was lying about going to math class, lying about going to my core classes, and leaving sooner than later type shit. Like, she thought I was leaving at, like, 10 which I really wasn't leaving at 10. I was leaving at like 12, um, 12 and 12.30 and one at the latest. And basically, boom, I'm at now. She like, okay, well, you got to go live with your dad. I go, I, I'm like, hell no, fuck that shit. So then my granny, my granny, bro, she, she, she called me because she stayed in Waterfront, but she had just moved away because she ended up getting um, married and shit. So she went and, and uh, moved in this uh, with her husband at the time. And basically, um, oh uh, yeah, she, she was like, uh, my granny was like, you can stay here. You can stay here at least ain't up till, till, uh, May. And I was there, I went and I'm like, all right, bet. I took that opportunity, took the opportunity. And then boom, my first day there, uh, she, she talking about some, I need the keys and shit. I'm finna have them come repo the car and nigga. Cause at first when I was in school that Monday, I was with my friends and shit. We was riding around the hood doing whatever we was doing. And she she takes me this long ass paragraph talking about some I'm finna have the cops uh flag that car down because it's a uh it's a it's a, like a um the location on the car so I can she can see where I'm at. And she basically gonna she said she was gonna report the car stolen. Mind you, I left school and I'm just riding around just chilling, smoking and chilling, bro. She takes me there, so I had to drop all these people off. Cause she, I'm like, hey, my mama said she about to report this bitch stolen. And at first, I ain't think nothing of it, but then my auntie called and said, yeah, she's gonna report it stolen. So you might want to go take it back to Waterfront. I, I dropped them off. I'm like, man, fuck this shit. Then I went, went back to Waterfront, parked the car, had the keys, I hid the keys with me and shit. And then it got so bad. Then my granny was like, okay, Kel, you need to give me the keys, cause she talking about they finna come repo it. So then they came and repoed the motherfucking car that I got and bought and paid for. It was was so close to paying off. I paid seven thousand off of it, and it was twelve thousand dollar car. So I only had it for five months, and basically, yeah, that happened. They came, took the car. I was I was mad as shit. So now now I'm about to now I gotta go back riding the bus to school. Now I gotta uh, not have my car. Now I got to live in Waterfront by myself with no food, no family, no nothing. And I'm just at my lowest. And then she would call me. She would talk shit, you know, because then my teachers, well, I would go to school late. Now I'm going to school late. I'm like, fuck this shit. So now I go to school late. My auntie would be taking me and my granny. Um, and then at one point in time, I went to school late and my auntie had just dropped me off. I go in there. I went to my third period class, my homeroom. I go pee. Soon as I go in there, I'm like, it's some like weed in this motherfucker. I wonder who in here smoking. Man, I go walk out. The principal, the white lady, she come, she go to my uh my home room because it's right down the way. Like it's like three doors down. She look at me. I'm like, fuck, she finna think it was me. Boom, she turn around, come up to me. Cause she like, where's Drakel? Like, like type shit. I'm like, I'm in the I was in the bathroom. They ain't even pull up that I just got there. They ain't even call my auntie name, do nothing. They just went off, you know, how I look. And shit like that. And me skipping school and all this shit. And then, boom, they turned around. She took me to her office. The cop, he was in there. He got to searching me and shit. Made me take my shoes and socks off. Trying to be on some gay shit, but I wasn't going. He was trying. He just patted me down. Made me take my shoes off. And then he got trying to get out. You know how they be trying to get off all on us and shit. I backed the fuck up. Like, nah, bro, I ain't with that shit. So then, boom, he turned around. Like, okay, well, you know, either I can arrest you or you can get suspended. And then basically, I'm like, well, do what you got to do. I said, I said, do what you got to do because I just got here. And mind you, I just had got dropped off. I was there for about 30 minutes. Just just got there, but then waiting, you know, 30 minutes for them to do what they had to do. Suspend me or arrest me. 
they end up calling my mom, lying and shit. Not even explaining that I just got there. My mama was at work. My auntie just dropped me off. My auntie ain't even have a phone, so she couldn't even, you know, say that I was with her or anything. So they just going off of just wrong place, wrong time. They called my mama. She crying on the phone. She they put they put her ass on speaker, bro. She over here crying and shit. You just like your dad, and you just you just stupid, and you know. I hope the guy that you don't come back here and all this shit. Why these motherfuckers can hear her saying this shit? And then they suspended me and shit like that. And then she just come to that motherfucking house talking shit, talking shit, talking shit, talking shit. And then boom, I end up uh, eventually moving out of there. And then she let me come back. She was talking shit about me and my girl, calling her out her name, calling me out my name, then starting a fight with my girl, um, blaming it on my girl, calling the police on me and my girl, lying to the police, like really ratting. So then it's like, my dad right now, you really rat because you called the police. All this shit made me get all my shoes, made her come with me, which is like, why wouldn't she come with me? Why the fuck would she stay here if you just acting like this? You fucking delusional, bro. So then boom, she turned around, she sent us on our way. I had my charger now. I got a charger. And then me and my girl, we packed the orders. We packed the car. It's three cop cars. Then they came. She was like, yeah, his plates expired. I had my paper plates on my car. My shit was like, I had it for like three months at that time. But then the plates was expired. She's like, yeah, his plates expired. And then lying on my girl. Like, yeah, she she hit me. All this crying and fake shit. But when, before they even came, she ducking her tail. She fucking like yelling like, Egging and shit on Kennedy, like you feel me, like what's up, like you feel me, like what you trying to do, and she wasn't no shit. She was my mom was just on some police ass shit, just trying to build a case. Yeah, I wanna, uh, I wanna, I wanna do this. I don't want them to be here no more. I wanna report this. They basically came and was like, his place don't matter. Uh, we can, and then seeing that we wasn't even fighting, and then it basically made me leave the premises and shit. And they was just like, she, they came to me like, yeah, she just tripping, like she called us for no reason. We pack our shit and we pull off and now we in the hood and the next day she caught she turned my phone off and shit. I didn't tell me happy birthday, nothing like that. Then it's like it's the next year. And then I seen it when I was with my Uncle Jermaine and he called him and shit like that. And then they crying and shit, all this fake ass shit. And mind you, I ain't see her for a year. I ain't see my dad for three damn near four years. And then she they's doing all this crying cap ass shit. And then fast forward, um, this shit happened with my dad. My mom was not letting me come back. Trying to put all this blame on my girl. Which was all a lie, bro. All a fucking lie. Now my dad and his people all looking at my girl like she's a bad guy. My dad playing his role like he fuck with my girl. Like he cool and shit. Like she cool peoples and shit. Just to be on some snake shit. Talking shit about her. Talking shit about me. I can go to a shelter or she can go to a shelter. Or it was all in her face smiling and shit like that. Acting so fucking cool with her. But really on some snake ass, spiteful ass, shiesty shit, you know. Then that happened. Um, then they end up saying she can't come back. Um, then I end up, you know, now present day. Fast forward all that bullshit. Now we here present day. And, you know, she texted me the other day talking about some, you know, I'm going to expose Jaquel Legacy. And, you know, basically like me telling the real, like the videos y'all seen before this one when I was kind of giving y'all glimpses of my people and shit before I got into detail about these people, she was she was basically, like, not supporting. Like, yeah, I subscribed. But then the next, like, two days later after I sent her, like, I think, Jerkel time number four, when I did that back-to-back, -back, she ain't respond. But then two days later, she texted me at, like, 7 in the morning, like, texting me long-ass paragraph. I'm going to expose you. And Jerkel Legacy then got to sending me pictures of myself when I was in ninth grade and up. Like, seventh grade when I had the little snack crossing, the IMSA hoodie on, and some big-ass fucking sweatpants with our fucking address written on the motherfucking, on the fucking wall behind me. So it's like, what are you trying to prove? Then the shit you're sending me is from my old Instagram when I was in ninth grade, and the clothes that I would wear would be the same shit I would have. Yeah, I would get little shoes and shit, yeah, but my granny would help when she could. And the fucking clothes I would wear is the same clothes I would have for fucking all through high school. I didn't start getting fresh in high school till 11th grade. Because then I started buying my own shit. And, like, even when she would give me, like, a pair of rocks, like, what pair I wear them. Like, I wear them one day, wear some uh, uh, Levi cargo pants, camo pants. And then the next day, you know, wear the rocks again. Like, I rotate shit. 
it was that bad. That's how much I didn't have clothes. I couldn't really do money shit because, you know, when I worked at my first job, I didn't really pay shit. I worked at McDonald's. My second job, I worked at Steak and Shake. I would kind of pay. My third job, I worked at Kroger. I had hella jobs, but my third job, I was at Kroger. And they had low ass dreads and shit. That was 2016. And I was making 850, bro. And she would literally tell me that, give me, give me her, give her my whole check. And saying she wouldn't, because I would have to get my dreads done, because that's before I would really, i get my shit braided and shit, but I wouldn't have, my hair to get done was like $85. And my checks would be like $60. I was making eight fifty, so my shit wouldn't be nothing. And she would take the money. She was like, either you can get kicked out, or you're going to give me the money. And I'd give her the money, because like, now I walk around with a nappy head. Now I can't get no haircut. Now I'm just like, just belittling my character all these years, you know? And then, like, holidays, like, Valentine's that come around, she'll do fake ass, give me some Kit Kats and a bear, you know. Um, then, like, shit, like, um, I, Mother's Day, I took her out. I took her out when I worked at Walmart. I got a video of that. I took them out. I paid for the shit. Took her to Castleton, got her some nice little Adidas, you know, took her and my sister to Outback, you know, fast forward all that bullshit. Then she had my brother, you know. Then she had my brother uh, February 11, 2020. And then she was like, this mom, she came back after a year, me not seeing her at my Uncle Jermaine's. And then days went by, I started to see her stomach. I hugged her. You know, she didn't even tell me. I hugged her. I'm like, I'm like, what's that? And she had a baby bump. And I'm like, you pregnant? She like, yeah. And she like, stuff's changed. She ain't even want to tell me shit. Trying to be so low key with the shit. Trying to be so low key. Like she said, I wasn't even going to tell you. She said that. I wasn't even going to tell you I was pregnant or my dad. And then boom, turn around, um, fast forward. Now she done had little bro. Now it was like, it's, it's getting up to that point and shit. And I'm like, okay, maybe God, maybe come back in her life to be in my brother life. You know, maybe he put my brother in her life and my life to merge us back together stronger than ever. But nope, I was wrong. You know, I go, I go, she, I go live with my girl. Now I'm living with my, at my girl auntie house in my car or inside on the couch or wherever, just in wherever. Basically my girl, family is giving me shelter and her and her too because we had lost our apartment and we we lived in 10 different homes and um even after we got had the apartment and shit like that it just kept getting worse and they weren't fucking with us well her family like well if she can't he can't i can't stay uh, but she can stay and then they'll be like my family i don't like her she this and that she can't stay but you can stay Y'all try so hard to break us apart, but look at us. We still together, still loyalty, still loyal to the core. And look at us. We doing better than you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers working at nine to fives. You motherfuckers living with your girl. You know what I'm talking about. You living with your fucking wife. I ain't even got to expo expose that truth. You living with your fucking wife, cutting grass and working in fucking chewies and shit. What are you doing with yourself? Then her, she fucking staying over here in a, went from a nice little home, a house type shit, to then living in a fucking apartment. Like, y'all going in circles, but y'all want to look at us like we we doing better than y'all, you feel me? And when I was at my lowest, I asked for money. Yeah, I would, you know, because I'm at my fucking lowest. You know, I, I need help. I mean, I don't be in y'all life. I need help. And she, uh, excuse them people that's coming past. And she, uh, I remember she gave, my granny was like, here, give him 20. Give him $20, and then I'll give him, uh, basically give him $20. She gave, she gave me my granny $20, but then one time I was like, I need, a, one time I was like, I need $11. And shit, I was I need just give me so I can get gas or food or some shit. But I'll sleep it in my car. This girl gave me eleven dollars exactly. Eleven dollars exactly. Eleven fucking dollars. Not a dollar more, not a dollar less, eleven dollars. So that was like okay. But then my brother shit happened. My brother shit happened. And she was like, Yeah, you can see him being more and shit like that. Prepping me up to see him. Bro, now she we ain't texted for days and shit like that. Then she like, Yeah, I had him. Didn't know she tells me I can't come see him. I can't come. She didn't want me to come see him born. Now she like, well, if you're fucking with your girl, you can't fuck. We ain't fucking with you. So now I got to miss my baby brother being born. I missed that shit. She done had him. Didn't tell me shit. Yeah, I had him. And, to, and then had me go take. Christmas came last year. Had me go take pictures with them. I went. I did it out of love, bro, because for, it's for him. I go take pictures. The only She said, I'm going to send you pictures. I got the socks on right fucking now, bro. And she gave me socks and some little old navy jeans and an old navy shirt. And that's crazy as fuck. I got these on. And then uh, 
yeah, it's some Christmas shit. She like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send you the pictures. I took pictures, like the pictures I only got of this shit, the photo shoot, was the pictures I took of on their screen and shit. So that's the only pictures I have of that ever, of that moment. And basically, yeah, she was like, I'm gonna send them to you. Never sent them, never sent them. So basically, all that shit was just for my brother. And I asked recently, I'm like, can I get, they went to Orlando for his birthday because she, yeah, we, we're going to Florida. So I had to get my tax paper. She was like, yeah, I'm going to Florida for her, their birthday because my sister's birthday is the 12th and my brother's birthday is the 11th, February 11th. And he said, yeah, um, now his birthday, February 5th, excuse me. And she's like, yeah, I'm taking them out to, for her, for their birthdays. Took them to Orlando. Never took me to Orlando. We went to Kings Island and shit twice. The first time was with my dad when I was a kid and Sonny. And the uh, second time was when, when her and me and my granny and my sister. And that was horrible. But, yeah, these niggas went to Orlando. And she ain't say, you want to come or nothing. You want to come or nothing. They didn't even do that. They went on a whole They went on a whole trip. And then, this ain't even the fucked up part. So, I ain't see him born. I ain't see his first birthday. I know I might have said second, but I ain't seen his first birthday. And, you know, she, I said, Can you, she get to send me pictures of this, of this shit. So you ain't invite me. You ain't let me come. I ain't see this little nigga born. I barely hold this nigga or barely see this nigga. Every time I'm trying to see him, she, the first day I seen him, she antsy as hell. She, you know, now she wasn't really trying to let me hold him and shit. She was watching me the whole time. Then she had it when my granny was there. She, my granny was so scared to let me hold him and shit. Like, I'm just as fuck. I'm going to kidnap this nigga. And then, uh, yeah, they on a trip. You know, she get to send me pictures of them on the trip. My little brother. She's sending me, now she's just throwing it in my face. Like, yeah, we went here type shit. You ain't a part of this either. Ha ha, ha ha. And sending, and sending me pictures of my little brother. And sending me pictures of her with my little brother laughing and all this shit. All this shit. <laughs> but I ain't never do that shit with me or did it for me. And she said all these pictures. And then I'm like, can you send me pictures of myself? You know what she said? She skipped over that and said, well, you didn't respond to what I said about the pictures about us. I said, yeah, y'all look cool. Can you send me the pictures of myself? Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> she said, she said, you could have came. You could have came to the trip. Why did they gone? You could have came to the trip, but you chose Kennedy over me. So all this shit, all these years, then the birthdays I miss. You tell me why you're on a trip. You could have came, but you picked Kennedy over me. What mother says that to their kid? You can't come with us to any, see him born, come to his first birthday, have any type of being in your life because they don't fucking talk to me. Talk about me my whole life. And then on the birthday, when they out of town, you could have came, but you picked Kennedy over me. The girl that's been loyal as fuck my whole life. You no, know, she met me when I was a senior and shit. She was a junior, but did more love and affection and shelter and food and comfort and loyalty. Not no fake flaw. No fake flaw at all. And she said that basically because I got Kennedy, I chose a side already. So you're going to forget about the shit when... You put a knife on me and my girl came up and talked, you know, because she was like, I ain't with, she is so happy to be there. And you, you put a knife on her and call her on her name and then start the shit with her and me and call the police and snitch on us. And then you got all of my aunties and uncles and everybody hating her, hating me, looking at us like we just fuck, fucking fly. And still to this day can talk shit about Kennedy, but don't know nothing really about her. So guess what? When we have our kid, our son, or our daughter, whatever the fuck, or just success, they ain't gonna know who the fuck y'all is. My daddy and my mom, they ain't gonna know who the fuck y'all is. You can take it however you wanna take it. You know, y'all really don't give a fuck because y'all demonic and evil anyway, so I don't give a fuck. But y'all ain't gonna be a part of their life. Why? Because look at y'all. Look how y'all did y'all son. Y'all think y'all gonna be around my kid? Look how y'all did the kid. <laughs> and who the, I'm having a kid with. So don't think that when we we up, because this channel going to grow. We going to grow and be successful in this and every other thing that I'm doing in life with her that she's doing and I'm doing. And together. 
And y'all won't be a part of none of this shit. So you can say what you want to say. But anyway, you know, she texts me two days after. It was like, yeah, um, sent me a video of my cousin that be with his friend that's a rapper. He he got like a million views on YouTube. Talking about changing storyline. This ain't you. They said you 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 ain't eating. It didn't send me pictures of me when I was fat, but off McDonald's and fucking bullshit. Cause then you started cooking once we lived with you. But all before then weren't doing shit. What did you show me pictures of me in high school where I half took she bro, she was happy as fuck. I didn't and I had to wear uniform all them years. She was happy as fuck. Then ninth grade comes, she ain't even she would buy me little clothes. She did ninth grade them the same clothes I had in ninth grade all the way until I got old enough to buy my own shit. Cause she didn't want to buy me that many clothes. Get yeah, his shoes. Okay, your feet grow. Okay, cool. I didn't have much of the income at the time. But then had me walk around with the same clothes on for years, bro. And then did me how she did me. But it's like, how are you gonna talk about my dad and all this shit about my dad? Like he's just bad guy, which he is, what he is. I ain't gotta say it. And then do the same shit that he did to us, to me. You did the same shit my dad did to us. You did it to me. But yeah, um, yeah, you, you talked about my dad slamming him all his all his life and him being around us, you know. And then you do the same shit he do. Oh, yeah, his birthday! <laughs> I got like a little uh, a teleprompter right here, um, because <laughs> it's so much bullshit. Like I can't wait to get this story out there and just stop talking about you fuck niggas, cause like y'all is so fucking irrelevant, bro. I'm so glad y'all did me how y'all did me. But yeah, the, my birthday. My brother's birthday was in Disney. His first birthday, his real birthday, he went to Disney World. All this nice ass fits, and then Christmas. Christmas came. I almost forgot the ice into the fucking cake, nigga. She got me. She was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get you she, she, the new Xbox." It's November thirteenth. I'm like, "Okay, I'm working though. I'm working." I'm like, "Hey, can you give me a new Xbox?" She sent me shoes. I got her the I got her the shoes she wanted, and she texted me, "Yeah, I'm gonna get you the Xbox. I'm gonna get you the Xbox, the new Xbox next year." Bro, every day hype my head up. Then, then, then I give her her shoes early because I got them so early. I got her her shoes. Christmas came. It's this big ass box. I didn't miss these niggas open presents. Then I miss my brother first Christmas. <laughs> then I go on this motherfucker. They got all these toys. They let me open my shit last. This motherfucker gave me socks from Walmart, black and white, two six pairs. So six white, six black pack for Walmart, the Fruity Looms. And then turn around and it's big ass box. I'm like, okay, cool. That's in a stocking with some fucking sour patches. Like I eat that shit. Then I'm motherfucking in a, in a, in a gas car with a hundred hours on it. Then I turn around, it's a big box. I'm like, okay, this must probably the Xbox. I open this shit, bro, it's pots and pans. This motherfucker got me pots and pans. So you did all this anticipation to me. Like you gonna give me this shit. They got all these nice new balances and Jordan what the fives and all this bikes and toys. And I ain't and I missed that Christmas to then give me pots and pans, bro. Pots and fucking pans. And it had the nerve to laugh at it. Then my auntie called it kill like it's pots and pans. It got me pots and pans. And then to this day, currently, a couple days ago, because she blocked me, she fucking sat here and said all this shit. And it was like, yeah, me and my sister, I mean, me, her and my little sister and her baby daddy is laughing at me. Y'all laughing at me, but yet you stay where you stay. You're th about to be 39 this month. You doing what you're doing. You work at a fucking job. Your daughter is who she is, which it doesn't even like, I ain't, that's a kid. And then your baby daddy just moved out of his motherfucking mama house. And he's like 30 something. So don't tell me shit. And then she got the baby daddy's shoes. There's a file. Got him some files that was like seven hundred dollars. And then Christmas came. He was in the room. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. So you got him. You got Christmas shoes and shit. She's like, she's like, okay, I get you some. I get you. I get you a game card or something like that. And then she tried to shop and get little shit before the day before Christmas. It was Christmas Eve, and she's like, okay, what do you want for Christmas? It's Christmas fucking Eve. And trying to then get shit. Then it was like all this shit about the Xbox. Then the shit come. I ain't getting you that. I ain't get that for you. So get your hopes. But then in the car, after we did the picture shit, I'm gonna get. I get y'all whatever y'all want. I, you get the Xbox? No. 
<laughs> but then after after she said no to that, got my little brother these toy cars and shit, and and bikes and toys and shit. And my sister, everything she wanted, but then me didn't give me shit. And then had a nerve to say, "Well, I'll get you the game car on the seventh of January." The seventh came, she ain't even say do shit. <laughs> Don't even talk to me. We ain't talked since Christmas. And then when she, I sent her the videos, she read or watched whatever she wanted to watch. Not even the whole truth. And then it went slander me two days after I sent her number four, number three, or whatever, four, number five. And then sent me all this shit at seven in the morning. And then just, you know, talking shit about me. And then sent me pictures of myself. But you didn't send me pictures of myself when I was a baby when I asked. But then sat here and didn't respond to that. And then sat here and sent me pictures of myself in high school. When you're like, the clothes I had was the same clothes I had for years. Like... I don't get people, bro. It'd be your own fucking people. Like, it'd be, it'd be your mommy, your daddy, whoever the fuck you want to call it. And it's like, they ain't parents, bro. And it's like, the little videos you watched and shit, that wasn't even all like this, you know? And for you to send me shit like that, like my cousin with his rapper friends, or send me pictures of myself in high school when I had the same clothes for years, except little shoes. You just did that because your conscience felt so guilty. So you feel like you had to prove something. You feel like you had to fucking prove a point. Which is like, why are you trying to prove a point when you ain't never told me sorry? But there's been times I told you sorry. Or times where, you know, I'm in waterfront. You crying to me saying I ain't going to graduate. I ain't going to be shit. Even then, you know, I'm in waterfront. ain't going to my car no more. I'm going to get my little shit out your car. Because you brought me my little clothes and shit. Because I didn't have a car to come get the shit. And you turn around and, you know... To my face, crying to me. You ain't gonna graduate, Kel. You ain't gonna be this and that. And then I graduate, invite you, give you a ticket. I had three tickets or four. Gave her a ticket, gave my granny a ticket, gave her friend a ticket, and then my girl a ticket. <laughs> and then had a problem with my girl then when she didn't even know her then. But just see her at Walmart and my girl was, you know, be outside sleeping or chilling till I got off and would turn around and talk about her then. Then had graduation and she didn't even introduce herself to my girl. And when I tried to introduce my girl to her, she didn't even fucking say nothing. She looked away, mugged and walked off. But then posted this picture of me. I'm so proud of you. I believe in you. But you my whole life said you didn't believe in me and I wasn't shit and I'm retarded I'm just like my dad and I'm I'm on the way when I said on the way to get my gown you saying I'm a special ed kid I'm retarded and I'm just like my fucking uh not like my dad but you know the doctor said I was slow that's why you're feeling because you're really slow and they said you're fucking retarded and time she said that she wished on my death you know it was times I was in fucking school in class when they had like a school shooter alert and I'm going through this shit, and I and I and I'm like, man, I hope I hope I post them on Instagram. I post them on Instagram. I'm like, I hope, uh, I hope I and I hope I go out. And she and I guess he screenshotted it on my sister and sent it to her, and then she she sent it to me, said, yeah, I hope you hope he do come in there and get you. So it was like, you know, it is what it is, but you know, just. You know, if you got a parent, appreciate them and love them. And if you got a kid, appreciate them and show them love. Because, like, I ain't had it. My granny was it. I didn't have my grandpa. My granny and my girl was it. You know, and I'm getting on my granny in the next video. But I ain't even finna go out and make it already 58 minutes. I ain't even finna talk about her for the rest of my motherfucking, you know, that's that. You know, and she can say whatever she want to say. But like I said, we got all the proof. So how do you want to play it? But, um... Like I said, it's your boy Drakel. This is Drakel Legacy. Welcome back to my channel, Drakel Legacy. It's Drakel, Drakel, Drakel. Um, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you for all the time y'all give me. Me giving y'all my time. It means a lot. It means the world. Let's run these views and subscribers up. I uh, thank y'all. I appreciate and love y'all. Next video is going to be not so negative. It might be a little bit, but it's going to be about my granny, my mom, my real mom. And I hope y'all enjoy more videos to come. Um, Cause they're the negative, they're the most negative. So like, I'm glad I got them motherfuckers out the way. So, whatever with them. But on to the next. My granny, my mom, my everything, alongside my girl. You know. But I love y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Once again, it's your boy Drakel. Make sure you sub. Don't just watch and click off. I thank y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, and uh, as you grow, I grow. <laughs> and as you go, I grow. Sorry, man. My motherfucking mind's so like throw it off because all this flux shit I've been 
the you know you know brought my energy down to their level but as you go i grow and as i grow you grow i love y'all i thank you watching i thank you watching subscribe like say whatever you want to say watch every video subscribe stay tuned because i got number nine coming up tomorrow about my granny my mom my everything so i thank and appreciate y'all so much 1600 shit with flash that but gang <laughs>